Namaste, everyone. Uh, I want to offer you a practice today, a yin practice, that is uh, mostly focused on upper body. So shoulders, neck, uh, back bends, heart openers, etc. Um, I think a lot of times in our yin practices especially, we tend to focus a lot on hips and hamstrings and lower back, which are very important, which you can find several practices uh, on this channel that are focused on that. Uh, this one, though, I wanted to do because I think it's, it's really important if you're a person who, uh, justified or not, feels like you have to shoulder a lot of responsibility, that you have to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. So today I want to offer up some practices that will uh, get you through that. And we won't really be using a lot of props. Uh, if you have a blanket or a bolster, uh, feel free to, uh, to use that. Frank Sinatra might be, uh, might be joining us for some of these. Uh, so the first pose we're going to start with will actually be mostly a hip opener and uh, a nice little stretch for the upper and the mid back. And Frank, you're going to have to move so people can see. We're going to bring the soles of our feet together for a forward fold of uh, butterfly pose. And we're going to hold this for about five minutes. So you might start with your feet about arm's length away from you. And then you're just going to hinge forward and let your chin bow to your ch towards your chest in the beginning. We'll, we'll eventually get a little more rounded. I think uh, an important thing to remember in a practice of yin is that we're we're attempting to get into the fascia, the connective tissue. So to do that, we have to get through the muscle. And then the muscle takes about 30, 40 seconds to kind of stop fighting you in the pose. And we've just passed that 30 second mark. So maybe we're able to come over a little bit more and maybe you let your chin rest on your chest. And I like to bring my hands to the mat at that point. And then you can wiggle the hips a little more. Your breath, as always, is just its natural rhythm. Frank is feeling very left out here and he's showing off, off camera. Now you've been in a minute, so maybe you draw the feet a little closer to you and you round over a little bit more. Frank has his own practice of yin that he follows. Now at this point, your breath again is it's in its very natural rhythm, but see if you can shift the breath into your back ribs, into your back lungs, to where as you breathe in, your, your back kind of expands. You know how when we have our breath focused on the front part of our body, how our chest can rise and fall. Think about that same feeling on your back. Let the head feel a little heavier. Your chin may actually touch the chest. Frank. Frank has shifted the camera. You're at that halfway point. Now at this point, if you carry a lot of tension, primarily in your back, uh, this could be feeling a little uncomfortable because you've been rounded into it for almost three minutes and you've stretched the muscle, you've gotten into that connective tissue. So if it's, if it's gone from the point of feeling uncomfortable to borderline painful, Find a little length in your spine for about three, four breaths, and then just round back into it. You have less than two minutes left in this shape. And the great thing about a yin practice is you're able to find some stillness and I will start talking less as we move into the practice through the rest of the poses. So you're able to find stillness and you're able to find quiet within your body and 
calmness within your breath. And then hopefully you can find that also in your mind. I find oftentimes for, for me when I practice Shin that that's the biggest uh, challenge is that your voice, your inner voice and your thoughts are kind of just amplified because you're not moving into that next thing. So if something comes up for you, just acknowledge that it's there and, you know, maybe you just put a little stick pin in it and it's something that you, you look at after, after your practice or, you know, you can journal it or meditate on it. 30 more seconds here, you all. Now, because we've spent so much time in this shape and we've, we've really stretched muscle, we've stretched connective tissue, we don't want to and we really won't be able to just jump out of this pose. So the first thing I'd like you to do is to press the soles of your feet together. This is going to engage your legs a little bit. If your hands aren't already on the floor, go ahead and place them there. Find a little bit of length in your spine and draw your belly in. And use the hands to walk your torso up. No big rush. And one foot to the floor, followed by the other foot. And then I like to bring my hands behind me and just find a little bit of a back bend here, like a little arch of the back. Just for about three, four breaths. Now our next pose is going to be on our back. And again, it's going to be, um, it's going to get a little bit into the hips uh, and it's going to be a lot of side body stuff. Um, and then after that, not a lot of what we do will entail uh, many hip openers. So come on to your back. This pose is called banana asana because you're going to make your body the shape of a banana. So arms overhead. And I like to take my a hold of my right wrist with my left hand. So as you reach up through your upper body, go ahead and shift it to the left side of your mat. Then your legs, walk those over to the left side of your mat and cross your right ankle over your left ankle. Now, if that feels like a, an unpleasant pull in your hip or in your low back, then maybe take that part out. And again, keep in mind that the first 30, 40 seconds here, it's purely muscle kind of working. And, and sometimes that might feel a little uncomfortable, but then that's going to dissolve, if you will and you'll start to move into that connective tissue. We're gonna do about uh, two and a half minutes on each side here. Your gaze can be straight up, or I like to look to my left arm. And you pass that 30 second mark, so maybe you make yourself a little bit more like a banana here. Close your eyes. Let yourself land in that feeling on the side body here. If at any point it, it's feeling too much in that right shoulder, just take the left, um, let go of the right wrist with the left hand. And same with down in those hips. If you feel that pull in an unpleasant manner, just don't cross your ankle. A little bit less than a minute here. I like to really breathe into my ribs in this pose. You'll really feel these right ribs expand. If uh, it's spring right now here in Charleston and pollen has been a little bit active and you can feel a little congested and this, for me, feels so good to counter those feelings. We have about 25 seconds, less than. So if you're holding on to that right wrist, go ahead and let that go. 
uncross that right ankle. Bring your arms down. Shift everything to the center. Just pause here. Take a deep breath in and a big breath out. And then we're going to take it to the other side. So arms up alongside the head. Right hand taking a hold of that left wrist. Shifting your body over to the right. Shifting your legs over to the right. Maybe crossing that left ankle over the left wrist. And you know, when we do these poses that have two sides, there is sometimes a, uh, you'll notice uh, that one side cooperates a little differently than the other. And this could be a pose where you're, you're sensing a little bit of that now. Perfectly normal. We all have a little bit of these asymmetries. That's why we're in this practice. This is a great pose to do when you first wake up and before you get out of bed. We have less than a minute here. And about that final 30 second mark. We're going to let go of that wrist, uncross the ankle, bring everything back to the center, bring those arms down. There's a little bit of a ha ah moment there. Walk your feet to the floor, and let's hug those knees into the chest. A little bit of rocking side to side here. And then pause, hug your knees in, curl your forehead up to the knees. Then we're going to find our way back to a seated position. You can either rock and roll up or you can roll to the side. Now we're going to go into a tabletop position for a back bend called a melting heart. Uh, this you don't need a prop for. If you have a block it could be very helpful for you. If you don't you're just going to use your uh, your forearm. So finding your way into all fours and lengthening the spine. Now I'm going to have my block here just in case I decide to use it. Now we're going to come down to the right forearm elbow and this is going to be our support for our head and then our left hand is just going to walk forward and you're going to try to keep your hips over your knees so thighs perpendicular to the floor. Put this somewhere where I can see it. Forehead to your right arm and reaching through that left hand. So again keeping in mind that this first little bit this is where we can kind of wiggle into it and work around any knots and then we hold here and we wait for that muscle to cooperate with us. And you might have a feeling that you're trying to hold the chest up but you can let it feel like you're trying to lower it towards the floor. And you might walk your your left hand towards the middle of your mat. Just 
Check in just to see where you might be holding on to some tension. You could soften this left arm at this point. You don't need to keep it very active. Toes can be curled under or not. And try not to hold your, your stomach in. We've passed our halfway mark. In this pose, I, I periodically like to do a sigh or exhale out of the mouth just to remind me to relax. We have a little bit more than 30 seconds on this side. Bring our right hand back alongside our chest. Press down into your knees and that left hand. And up into a little tabletop pose. You can kind of feel a little bit of the difference there already. We're going to do go into another pose for the, the same arm here. So bring your big toes together. Let your knees open up a bit. Shift your hips back to child's pose. We're going to do a little twist here in child's pose. You're going to thread that right arm, the one you were just resting on, onto the floor. Again, this could be a great place to have a block. You could also use this left hand to rest your forehead on. Or you could take that left hand forward, maybe to the middle of your mat, or maybe over to that right corner of your mat. I think I'm going to rest on mine for this practice today. Drop that weight. So it almost feels like you're, you're lowering your chest onto that right arm. That little half melting heart pose we did, that was a good back bend and heart opener. This one's a little bit more for the shoulder and uh, again, that upper back. And you get a, a mild twist here. You're almost at that halfway point. combo of these two poses are very good if you are, you know, if you're a desk person and you tend to hunch over your, you know, your computer, your keyboard. Uh, if you drive a lot and you're a very, we'll say a defensive driver. <laughs> this will undo those knots. You have a little bit more than a minute here. A little bit more than 30 seconds.
So extend that left arm if you had it bent. You're gonna use that to help you unwind from this very mindfully, very easily. No rush, remember. So we bring up the torso. Let's bring the ankles and knees together. Roll those shoulders back and down. And if you wanna see that if it's, if it's really worked, hold your arms out in front of you and your right arm is gonna be a little bit longer than your left. Deep breath in, open the mouth, deep breath out. Let's make our way back into that shape of table. So this time we're gonna come down onto that left forearm. So again, this is gonna be your, your resting spot for your forehead. Your, your booty's up, your hips are, are up into the sky, your thighs parallel, or sorry, perpendicular to the floor. And you're gonna reach that uh, right hand forward. Forehead to that forearm. And again, it's gonna take you a few moments to let everything just kind of soften here. But it's almost like you're, the feeling is your sternum, that bone in the center of your chest, it's just kind of dropping towards the floor. And as you let that happen, you could soften that right arm. And it almost feels like your, your shoulder blades could come together on the back. I have a friend who says that at a certain point, you know, we all start to have this, this look of a boiled shrimp. So this will sort of de-shrimp you. Decrustation you. find for myself on this side that I kind of have to scan around that I'm not trying to like hold my upper body up, that I'm not sucking in my belly, that I'm not clenching my jaw. You're going for a lot of, you know, passive moments in this pose. And at that halfway point, Less than a minute. Last 30 seconds in this shape. And then we're gonna draw that extended arm back so we can press into the hand. Up for a moment in tabletop. So big toes together, knees maybe a little bit wider. You could maybe take them as wide as your mat. We're gonna reset our timer there. And then we're gonna thread this left arm through. And like I did on the last side, I'm gonna bend my right arm and rest my head on that right forearm. You could keep it extended. You could walk it towards the midline of your mat or eventually to that top left corner of your mat. This would be a good place to check in. Are you trying to hold anything up or together? Are you like engaging the glutes to keep the hips up or engaging the, the core to try to lighten the weight of the upper body? Sink your hips towards your heels. Let your chest sink towards your mat. It's not gonna get there, you've got the left arm there, but it, what it will do is help you get into 
that area of your body, your left tricep, shoulder, upper back. Halfway point. A little bit more than a minute. Again, let some exhales fall out of the mouth. Twenty more seconds here. All right, so start to unwind from your twist first, then your hands to the mat as you work that torso upright. Bring the ankles and the knees together. Roll those shoulders back and down. Maybe bring your hands behind you and interlace your fingers. Give yourself a little stretch here across the chest. Tip your chin down. Deep breath in. Big breath out. And come back out into that shape of tabletop. Maybe a little cat-cow here. Maybe your body wants a little bit of movement. If not, just hold tabletop. Then we're gonna find our way onto our seat. We're going to work a little side bending here. Again, for a little bit of lateral body. If you are a little tighter in the hips or the um, hamstrings, maybe a folded blanket, the uh, rounded edge behind you, and you could sit up on the edge of the blanket, not like right up in the middle. Take your right leg off to the side here. It doesn't have to go, you know, you're not trying to make yourself a wishbone. Get this clock here so we don't hold it a moment longer than necessary. Right hand on right shin, left hand on left thigh. Start to lean towards the right. You're not using this right hand to grip this shin and pull you over. You're not pressing this left thigh down with the left hand. They're just here to support you. And you'll feel like, you know, that that little side bend can get a little bit deeper. If you have a block, you could bring that into play by maybe placing it on your thigh. Because then we're going to bend this elbow and rest our head on this right hand. If you don't feel like you need the block, you can just be on the thigh here. And for me, the trick is to not engage this right leg. Like I'll have to kind of keep checking in that I'm not uh, engaging the glutes or flexing this right foot. I want it very, very active, very passive rather, not active. And you could take this left arm overhead. And I like to use my left hand just to kind of support my head and my neck. And I'll let my left elbow kind of roll in towards my head a little bit versus trying to point it up or press it back. To me, this is one of those yin poses 
that uh, looks like you're posing. <laughs> this is your pinup. Pass that halfway point. You might walk the elbow a little further down your leg, like maybe to your shin if it was on your thigh. in a minute on this side. Now we're going into the final 30 seconds here. Now you've been in a side bend for a long time. Don't try to just spring up. You're gonna take your left hand to the floor, just kind of right inside your uh, right leg. And then we're gonna take the right hand to the other side of the leg and just kind of rotate and bow over this right leg for a couple of breaths. And we're gonna bring the hands to the front, lengthen the spine, use the hands to bring the torso up. You might have to use the hands to draw this right leg in. Just cross that shin in front of your right, or sorry, right shin in front of your left. take it to the other side. So left leg is going to come out to the side, right leg in. So left hand on this left shin, right hand on this right thigh. So remember a while ago at the beginning, towards the beginning of class, I was saying how when we have these poses with two sides, one side tends to play a little differently than the other. This could be a pose where that is really true for you. So just, if this is your less cooperative side, be patient with it. And maybe we go into that bended elbow, head to hand. And then you can bring this right arm up. Again, I like to just kind of cup the back of my head, back of my neck, and let that right forearm just kind of rest on the uh, my right temple here. So it's a side bend, so there's definitely an upper body benefit here, but you are also getting some hip, uh, some hamstring, some inner thigh, maybe even a little hip flexor stuff. So it's sort of a gift with purchase kind of pose. <laughs>
past that halfway mark, by the way. Sorry, I was so into the pose that I <laughs> forgot to tell you. This is one of my favorites. A little bit more than a minute. Thirty seconds left here. All right, then that right arm, you're going to bring it down so you can bring the right hand to the inside of that left leg and the left hand to the outside and just take a moment to kind of move here back to the center again think about slow motion here you're not trying to spring out of any of these poses not only would that be really uncomfortable but you know you could do some harm to yourself cross this left shin in front of the right Take those arms overhead, interlace your fingers, press your palms up, chin down, ground in your sit bones, reach up through your arms. And we'll bring those arms down, give yourself a little shrug in the shoulders here. We're going to stay in this cross leg position. Again, if you want to sit on the edge of a blanket, feel free. If you feel like you want to explore the possibility of some hip stuff here, bring this right leg forward a little bit and then see if you can stack your left shin on top of that right. If this is not your jam, find that comfortable seat. If you need to send the legs out, feel free to do that. We're going to add some eagle arms here. So you're going to wrap your left arm under your right and snake the arms around each other. If that is not a shape that is immediately available to you, you could just press your forearms and elbows together, or you could just kind of give yourself a hug, or you could even just take this left arm across the body at a little bit of a diagonal and down. Otherwise, wrap the arms around each other. And, you know, typically when we do these eagle arms in a, in a vinyasa class, we're very active with them, right? We're holding them up, dot, dot, dot. This one, we're gonna let the elbows just kind of drop towards your, your belly a little bit. And maybe you even bring your head to your hands. And just close the eyes. And breathe. This is one of my other favorite poses to do in Yin. It's not so much my favorite in a yang class, a vinyasa class, but this one it is. About 30 more seconds here. We're going to 
his arms with some control. Don't rubber band them out. Bring those hands behind you. Find a little bit of a back bend. Left foot to the floor. Right foot to the floor. Find that back bend. Two breaths. And we'll come back to the center. We'll take it to the other side. So again, you have the option to either just cross the shin in front or to stack the shin on top. Remember, you can just press the elbows, you can take the arm across, or just give yourself a hug here and wrap that right arm under you. And same thing, this eagle's not going for flight. This eagle's like chilling on a, on a branch or a limb somewhere. So elbows drop a little bit, and maybe you just rest your head on your hands. Another great pose if you, um, this is a great pose to do like if you're a tennis player or a golfer at the end of your game, find this. This is great for your hips and that upper back shoulder area. This is also good if you're, um, you know, if you're a gardener uh, person, like you work a lot in your garden and you're kind of hunched over. Uh, if you're a cyclist, um, there's so many ways to incorporate this pose. Sorry, audible sigh. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> oh, that one was on purpose. That one was just to be a smart ass. Thirty seconds. So then let's unwrap these arms. Again, think of it like, like the matrix, like you're just doing it in slow motion. Hands behind you. Now this time when you bring your feet to the floor, maybe take them a little bit wider than your hips. And you could just stay still and uh, explore that back bend or a little side to side with your legs. Your hips might really appreciate a little bit of movement after all of that. Then we're going to do another forward fold. This one's called caterpillar pose. And I'm in dire need of a pedicure. Try not to judge. Feet are about hip width apart, maybe a little bit wider. Now, if you had uh, two blocks, you could put two blocks uh, on either side, a block on either side, rather. If you had a bolster, you could put a bolster across your lap, or right here down the middle. Otherwise, we're just going to hinge forward. And your temptation is going to be, as you hinge, to flex these feet. So wiggle them out a little bit. Try not to give in to that temptation. We're still shy of that 30 second mark. So you're, especially if you're someone who's tight in the hamstrings, you could be meeting some resistance right now. So try to let those feet flop open. Maybe even take them a smidge wider. Smidge is a technical yoga term, by the way means a little. And then let your chin rest on your chest. If you really want to amplify this feeling in the back of your neck and your upper body, bring one hand to the back of your head, other hand on top, not pulling, but just letting the weight of your arms add to that rolling over. There's no goal of how low to go here. And if this is not comfortable and painful, don't do this part.
halfway there. One more minute. About 15 seconds here. All right, so let's energize those legs a little bit. Flex those feet. Maybe bring your hands to your shins or to your feet. Find some length in the spine. Again, take your time to walk your torso up. Never be in a hurry here. Roll these shoulders back and down. Oh, there was a good pop in my shoulder there. Big breath in, big breath out. Now our second to last uh, pose we'll do before Shavasana is gonna be a bit of a back bend. And this one uh, you'll need some props for, uh, really just a block and or a blanket. Um, if you have a bolster, a bolster would be even better. Uh, if you don't have those, you could always use a really uh, thick book that you could put a blanket over. Uh, you could uh, use a very firm pillow or cushion uh, that will go right behind your back ribs. Uh, if you don't have those things or you don't want to do this uh, supported version of fish pose, I'll encourage you to come onto your belly and do uh, sphinx pose. So on your belly, elbows up under your shoulders and you'll get a similar back bend to what you will get in uh, your fish pose. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our block, we're going to take it at the low height, and you might have to adjust this uh, where it is on your mat. I wouldn't necessarily go higher than this because that's going to be a big back bend. Your blanket, uncurl it maybe one time, and then place that over the block. This is just to kind of smooth out the, the rough edges uh, of the block. Again, if you had a bolster, you could just use a bolster. Now, you're going to come down. I like to get it at the bottom of my ribs. Now, if you're a little tighter, uh, as you start to come over and you find that your head maybe doesn't touch the floor, like if you're here and there's a little bit of space between you and the floor, if you had a second block or a second blanket, you could do that. I have this really cool stool that has a unicorn on it. And what I could do after I knock myself out is I could put it there and rest my head on that. Otherwise, you're gonna see if you can just bring the crown of your head to the floor. I like in the beginning to keep my knees bent, feet on the floor. Arms can come down like little Shavasana pose or letter T or maybe goal post arms. Close your eyes. This is a little bit of an inversion. Again, if you need something under that head, another block, a smaller pillow, Another folded blanket or towel. We've passed the 30 second mark. So maybe the muscles are cooperating a little bit more. 
And you could bring the soles of the feet together, let the knees open. You could also just take the legs out like you would in Shavasana. If that's not comfortable, keep the knees bent, feet on the floor. You're almost at that halfway point. bit more than a minute. I love to really exaggerate the deep breath in here. You can really expand your lungs and your ribs. You took the legs out or soles of the feet together. Bring your feet back to the floor. And then we're going to roll to the left. So I like to bring my chin up to my chest first, then roll to my left and let myself just kind of come off my prop. Lay on your side for about five breaths. And then as you come up, we'll just move these props out of the way. That is such a great pose for uh, end of the work day. Uh, if you've been like in the car for a long time, uh, it's really great to open up all this. We're going to do one more twist and then we'll get to uh, the best part, Shavasana. So knees bent, feet on the floor. We're going to come down, interlace your hands, bring them behind your head. So it's kind of like you're like you're laying out, you know, on a blanket under a beautiful blue sky. And we're going to wrap that right leg over the left. We're going to bump our hips over to the right about two inches. And then we're going to let our knees drop to the left. We're going to do this for about ten breaths. As you drop the knees to the left, you might find that that right shoulder wants to creep open. So you could ease that interlace of the fingers. And if you have to, just come into like little goalpost arms. All right, then keep your hands where they are. Bring your legs back to the center. Uncross. Let's do a full breath in, full breath out. Then we'll wrap our left leg over the right, bump your hips over to the left a couple of inches, drop your knees to the right. So again, if this is your side. For me in this pose, my left shoulder really wants to hike up. So I'll take my hands a little further apart. And bring your legs back to the center. Uncross, bring your arms out so you can take a hold of these knees. Give them a hug into your chest. A little bit of side to side there. And then extend your legs out. Drop your arms down beside you. Close your eyes. 
Start your breath low in your belly. Breathe into your belly, your ribs, your chest. Open the mouth to exhale, empty out the chest, the ribs, the belly. Again, inhale to the belly, the ribs, the chest. Pause at the top. Open the mouth to exhale through the chest, the ribs, the belly. Inhale from the belly up to the top. Hold. Open the mouth, exhale. Inhale, belly, up to the apex of the chest, hold. Sip in a little bit more breath. Open the mouth, exhale from the chest, down to the belly. One more time, inhale, belly, ribs, apex of the chest, hold. Sip in a little more breath. Sip in a little more. Open the mouth, let it all rush out. If you can stay here for about another five minutes for your Shavasana, that would be an awesome end to this yin practice. Otherwise, I appreciate you practicing with me today, and I look forward to seeing you again on the map. Namaste.